Our first speaker tonight is Kushi Doshi. She, have you ever found yourself being dragged through a monotonous and unfulfilling routine? Believe it or not, it is often the monotony of your mind that is directly translating to the experiences you undergo tangibly. Get on board as I take you through a rather unexplored path of rewiring your brain and your outlook on life. Consider this a challenge to take that first step of embarking on a magnanimous journey of reinvention and self-awareness. Her speech title is The Spell of Monotony. Break it with all that you have. Let's welcome Kushi Doshi. Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Like I like that introduction, just as Joan said. Someone once said that to seek contentment is to unleash the novelty within monotony. Now I want to ask you all a question. How many of you have felt like hamsters running around a wheel ceaselessly with no end goal in sight? I'm sure many of us at some point in our lives have felt like we've been confined to a spell of monotony and are being dragged through a boring, mundane routine that is equally unfulfilling. But what if I told you that it's not, it's our brain that has casted that spell of monotony upon us. You know, our brain has this mystical ability to synchronize our thoughts with our actions and our routine that we perceive tangibly. Our brain once slipped into this routine of patterned thinking and mundane thinking, that causes our actions and our reactions that we perceive tangibly to follow suit. We might wake up, brush our teeth, take a bath, get ready for work, eat breakfast, and again, do the same thing on repeat. Now that has become a habit that we're all confined to. It is the habit of being ourselves. But is that very habit that's equally detrimental to us because it halts our progress. It impedes our growth. You're not because we all can break that spell and we can break that spell by reinventing ourselves. We can rewire our brains to unleash the novelty within the monotonous lives that we perceive ourselves to be living. But how possibly can we reinvent ourselves and unleash that novelty within the monotony? Well, you could do that through embellishing your mind. Embellishing your mind with three elusive jewels or gems. So the first gem is happiness. The second gem is gratitude. And the third gem is devotion. I believe happiness is truly a trait that can uplift any individual from the gravest of predicaments and agony. It has the power to change our outlook towards life. Not a day goes by in my house where my mom doesn't unwaveringly remind us that happiness is a habit you have to cultivate it. Now, what does that mean? Well, you shouldn't be treating happiness as an end goal. You should be treating it as something that you can integrate into the magnanimous journey of living life. It shouldn't be associated with, oh, I've accomplished something. I'm happy. Rather, just wake up every day. And be happy because you're living life. You're experiencing the magnanimity of living life. That is why once you start being happy, once you start cultivating a habit, a habit defines your personality. And when you cultivate happiness, it gives you the strength and the confidence to look at every, each and every predicament right in the eye and smile right back at it. My second jewel is gratitude. Now we all know the power of gratitude. We like expressing our gratitudes for the house we live in, for the friends we have, for the food that nourishes us, and for the family that we have. 
But have you ever thought of expressing your gratitude towards things that are yet to come in your life? Future gratitude. Not sure how many of you might have heard of it, but it's definitely a concept relatively new to me because it has allowed me to be thankful for the visions that I hold within my mind and all that my creative mind can hold and create as a story for what I want to see and experience and go through in the future. It allows me to synchronize my mind and my body to manifest something in my mind prior to attaining it tangibly and in real life. It allows my body and my brain to be prepared for all that I'm going to experience in the future. And it allows me, it gives me the power to manifest all that I have envisioned right here in my brain. So I'm not using my brain as my controller, but I'm rather using it as my servant because I know when my brain's my servant, it's my best servant and not my worst enemy. My last jewel is devotion. Devotion doesn't have to do anything with spirituality or religion. It has to do with your undying passion to live each and every moment with immense purpose and to view even the most mundane routine rituals that you perform on a day-to-day -day basis with excitement because you immerse yourself in performing everything that you take upon and you give your 100% to it. Devotion is what makes you process oriented and not goal oriented. I think in today's world, we really need that because we, did, we attach ourselves way too much with the goals and detach ourselves from the process. We have blinders. All we look at is what, I'm, what am I going to achieve? Am I going to achieve it? And that brings about a lot of different stresses and predicaments in our lives. And that is what devotion does. It allows you to detach yourself from the outcomes and intertwine yourself with the beautiful process of immersion, immersion into every act that you take upon. So you, you start giving your 100% and your level best to whatever you take upon. So you could use any of these three jewels to embellish your psychological realm because all each one of them has a profound power to transform the way you view life and it can help you reinvent yourself inside out holistically. So I want you to consider this a challenge to reinvent yourself, to rewire your brain and to transform yourself in the best possible way and the best level that you are yet to attain. Thank you. I love the title of your speech, Spell of Monotony, Break It With Everything You Have. That was one of the most well thought out speech titles I think I've encountered. One of the goals that you are to do, to, this is an Inspire Your Speech Audience um, project. So the member needs to present a speech that inspires the audience and it should be engaging and entertaining and moving. And I think it was all of those. Some of the things that I noticed is you really used the rule of three with your three jewels. That was fantastic. Happiness, gratitude, devotion. You came out from behind the lectern, which isn't on a podium because we don't have a raised platform. And what I thought is that was really well done. What we might want to do is maybe just use a little bit more of the speaking area within the context of realizing that we're on Zoom and we don't want to disappear from those who are meeting us remotely. Uh, I think that you gave us a challenge. You challenged the audience to embark on a journey of self-awareness. Uh, opportunities you may want to work on is uh, pause a little bit at the start, maybe even begin with a quote or a compelling statistic. Opportunities to challenge yourself, I would say, would be give us the meaning of monotony. Maybe uh, give us some examples of the project that you're working on, the concept that you want to share in terms of quotes. I looked a few up. People chained by monotony, afraid to think, clinging to certainties. They live like ants, Bella Lugosi, Count Dracula. Beware of monotony. It's the mother of all the deadly sins, Edith Wharton, American novelist. And my third and final one is monotony and solitude of a quiet life stimulates the creative mind, Albert Einstein. Give us maybe some statistics that buttress your 
project and, and your concept. Maybe even share some stories, uh, maybe some people that you've encountered that you would say that are successful because they are able to look in and embark on that journey. I thought that you also can speak a little louder and maybe even put a little bit more vocal variety into your presentation. As far as some of the specifics that you did really well, I would rate you very highly on, on clarity, your gestures. I liked your gesture when you came forward with your hands together. They were not too busy. I think that they would work even on Zoom. I liked that you always seem comfortable when you present to us. You had a professional appearance, which is something Thing I always look for, having lost to a banker in a suit a long time ago, but that's another story. I thought your topic was engaging, uh, that it connected with the audience. It's obvious that you have persevered through your Toastmaster journey, and you shared with us some tidbits that hopefully will get us out of any spell of monotony, because certainly at the Youngest and Funnest Club, we don't have monotonous engagements at all. Matter of fact, this Saturday at uh, three o'clock, we'll be at uh, the Marlowe's Tavern for Tavern Time. All right, that's just a short announcement.